What's up, guys? Been a long time, hadn't it? Yeah, I know. Just wanted to do a little update video. So I just wanted to welcome y'all back to another episode of Drew's Creations. In this episode, it really ain't going to be nothing but just a little life update. A few new things that's happened to me in life. Uh, might do a little truck update video for those that like my truck. My 97 F250 Power Stroke with a 7.3 legendary power stroke diesel as most of y'all know i'm sure everybody knows about seven threes if you don't you've been hiding under a rock but anyway yeah i'm just gonna do a little life update video and uh just talk so if this video ain't for y'all uh just why i'm on here telling you what this video is gonna be about now so if that ain't your kind of video uh no hard feelings appreciate everybody that subscribed appreciate all the new subscribers uh we're gonna have some content coming soon. I know I hadn't really done a whole lot of filming this year, but just kind of been focusing on life and stuff like that. So, eh, y'all understand, you know how it is. Things get busy and sometimes you just need to step away for a while. But uh, anyway, I've had a lot of people asking about me lately, so I figured I'd come on here and make a video. So anyway, that's what it's gonna be. If you're interested, stay tuned and uh, appreciate you watching. Well, here we are, guys. <clears throat> First, I guess we're going to start off with a little truck update and show y'all some things we've done to it in the last seven, eight months of ownership. I'm coming up on one year of ownership on this thing. I hadn't really done anything crazy to it, but I did. The last video <clears throat> that I did on this thing, it did have some fuel leaks and uh, still looked like a Papaw truck. And uh, we've since changed that. We got the fuel leaks fixed, got it looking a little bit better, and got it cleaned up. It's dirty right now. Dirty right now because the weather's just been kind of bad here. But anyway, I'll go ahead and show it to you now. There you go. She's dirty right now, as I said, but it's still cleaner than it was in the last video. Um, this weather being bad, we've had a lot of some, quite a bit of rain lately, and. I've been working this thing a little bit because I had to do a little bit of hauling for my mother. Uh, so, yeah, she's kind of dirty right now from that, but it's a lot cleaner than it than it was in the last video. I got it shining. Definitely wasn't shining like this in the last video. This thing's actually in really good shape overall. You can see my car reflecting off of it. Uh, my buddy kept telling me to peel all that chrome off of it. He's like, oh, I'll peel all that chrome off of it. I was like, no, man. When this thing gets right, she's going to be looking amazing. And, and now that I've got her all cleaned up and got some good-looking wheels and tires on it, which also need to be polished, by the way, about them. You, the, they're Mickey Thompson's, Mickey Thompson wheels. And uh, they just need a good polishing because I bought them used. Got brand new Aturo. Trailblade AT's all-terrain tires on it. I didn't want no mud tires on it because they make a lot of noise and they just don't last, really. And for the kind of stuff I do, you know, I want it to look good, but I also use my truck too. And I was going for kind of a classic look on these because these trucks just look the best that way, in my opinion. So that's what we were going for. <clears throat> yeah, just some Mickey Thompson MT's bullet hole wheels and uh the turos pretty good tire for the money <clears throat> didn't want all that noise and these these right here do all i need they get a lot better traction than the stock ones that was on this thing i had the old steelies with the hubcaps on it because this was an xl truck not an xlt truck so it didn't come with a nice aluminum bullet holes from the factory and well, I tried to find a set of those, but they're pretty hard to find, and people that have them want a fortune for them, so didn't really get any of those. But yeah, there's an update on that. Got the, got some good-looking wheels and tires. I'm happy with them. Get them wheels polished up, and uh, she'll be looking right. Now, other than that, that's the biggest visual change is getting it cleaned up. And well, I'll go ahead and do a full-on walk around of this thing. That way y'all can see it. Yeah, there's that. 
This thing has spent its whole life in North Carolina. It's never been out of North Carolina as far as I know. Uh, it was bought pretty local to me. And uh, still got the stock factory exhaust from last time, so we ain't gonna do no fire up video of it. If you wanna see that, if you wanna hear this thing running, check out the previous video on this thing and you'll hear it running. It sounds like any other stock 7.3. It's still got the cat and the gigantic muffler on it, but that's one of the next things to change on this thing is we're gonna hopefully get a four inch straight pipe put on it so it can breathe a little better and sound better. <clears throat> sound like this thing ought to sound, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, she's real clean. You can see it shining. It's actually dirty to me right now. Some of you might say that it's not, but to me it is because I like my stuff to stay clean, but also, like I say, I use it for a truck. So that's what it's made for. It's not a pavement princess. It does go off-road. You can see all the dirt on the tires. I do take it through the yard quite a bit when I'm hauling, but more stuff to change. We're probably gonna put new headlights in it. Might do something with that grill, might replace it, or might try to spruce it up a little bit. Bumper's in really good shape, so we're probably not gonna mess with it. Um, need to one of these days I need to take this bug shield off and clean it real good and clean in behind it that'll help it out a lot too um, only real paint damage on this thing's right here a little bit of sun damage where the clear is peeling but I'm pretty sure that's pretty common on stuff like this they spend its life in the sun outside and it's got a little bit of mold on the hood right now y'all can see it's added under some trees and stuff it just sits in the driveway a lot I've had this thing a year now, or coming up on a year in December, and uh, hadn't put but probably four or 5,000 miles on it in a year, maybe less than that. Honestly, probably less than that, honestly. <clears throat> I just drive it when I want to and when I need it, just enough to keep it from sitting. But uh, yeah, I'll uh, pop the hood real quick, and we'll look, look peek underneath there. Like I say, I ain't gonna fire this thing up because i got a video of that it sounds like any other old 7.3 with stock exhaust so we're not going to go that route but his truck is four wheel drive uh, it's automatic i wish it wasn't i wish it was a five speed but it is what it is it was in really good shape and i couldn't pass it up probably i thought about doing a manual swap but probably won't just because it's really involved and it can be very expensive. Um, I'd like to, but the only way I probably ever will is if I got a donor truck to do it with, because that's the most efficient way to do a five speed swap on one of these, because you got to have a lot of different parts out of, out of them. But anyway, a little update video on here under the hood. We did get the fuel leaks fixed. Um, it had the typical 7.3 leaks. Uh, all these OBS trucks did that stuff. So uh, <clears throat> what it is, is all the hoses going to the fuel bowl, they rot and they start leaking as well as, I can't, probably can get y'all in there. The mechanical fuel pump right there actually right there that is the mechanical fuel pump that is a new carter mechanical fuel pump which is the oem equivalent for these trucks the oem pump for these trucks it's a just a mechanical lift pump it runs off the camshaft and uh <clears throat> they tend to leak over time which this one had all the fuel bowl, the fuel bowl leaks and the mechanical fuel bowl, or the mechanical fuel pump leak, as well as the banjo bolt under the turbo was leaking as well. So yeah, in the last video y'all seen, this thing was leaking fuel and um, wasn't running until its fullest potential. And I've since fixed that. Um, probably gonna put some new boots on it here real soon because they're original and in rough shape and i've been thinking i might have some boost leaks i don't have a gauge or nothing in this thing yet so i can't really tell what boost i'm running at the moment but 
I'm sure they're probably leaking a little bit. That's kind of pretty, that's another thing that's pretty common on these trucks, but this one's all ori mostly original. <laughs> Hadn't had a whole lot of mechanical stuff done to it. Um, so it's pretty typical to be a 97 to need stuff like this. And I don't remember in the last video or not, I had a pretty gnarly belt squeak, squeak and squeal and ended up putting a brand new belt on it. Putting a brand new belt on it and it's pretty well solved a lot of my issues. I think I am I'm probably gonna have to put a new tensioner on it pretty soon and probably idler pulley, but again, typical maintenance stuff for a truck that's a 97. But she's still got less than 200,000 miles on her. I think she's at 189 and some change right now. So yeah, that's a quick little update on the 7.3. Um, as far as saws go, we have acquired a saw pretty recently. If y'all watch Bellhopper's channel, I'm sure you've seen it. Me and Bellhopper did a little video on it. Pretty cool old saw. It's a John Deere model CS81. Don't judge my messy building. It is a complete mess right now. Yeah. Here's the John Deere CS87. Saw that, that you probably seen in Bell Harbor's video. Runs real good now, thanks to Bell Harbor. Me and him got in there and started looking at that carburetor and saw the most odd wear either one of us had ever seen. It uh, was pretty severely worn. <clears throat> oh, and here is the hodgepodge. Uh, it says 365, but it's really a 372 now. It was a 365 special. But this is a uh, 372 that me and Bellhopper put together. It's got new bearings in it. And a new aftermarket top end that Bellhopper ported for me. It's pretty spicy. Just got another muffler modded for it. As you can see. Mr. Corey Corp did that muffler for me. A lot of times we do the mufflers ourselves, but I've just been so busy I hadn't really had time, so I saw it and saw that feller selling it, and I just had him mod it for me real quick so I could slap it on there because I was borrowing a muffler from Bell Hopper and just needed to get it. But next things are coming, we're going to put an OEM handle on this thing because and an OEM air filter cover because those are the only two, other than a cylinder and piston. Those are the only two aftermarket pieces on this saw, and I absolutely cannot stand it. If y'all know me, I don't like very much aftermarket stuff. It just don't feel good to me. And I've ran a lot of OEM saws. I've ran stuff like that my whole life, and I just, I can't, I can't, I can't do it, guys. I just can't. I'm just going to be honest with you. Some people don't mind. If you're a hobbyist or just a firewood person or whatever, it's fine. Uh, I don't cut a ton anymore like I used to, but um, I do still go cut from time to time, and I do still do a little bit of tree work from time to time. I haven't here lately because things are slow right now with the holidays, but I'm sure that's fixing to pick back up pretty soon. So I'll probably be doing a little bit more tree work here coming up, but that's going to be a upcoming project. This Kawasaki trimmer I picked up. Uh, this makes the third one of these I own now. They're great trimmers. I absolutely love them. They're super lightweight and they pack a punch for what they are. Great little trimmers. If you ever come across one, I suggest snatching it up. They're great trimmers. That one currently don't run. The rope's out of it right now. And somebody didn't really know what they were doing and ended up stripping out most of the screws in the pull start cover so that's going to be a fun little project getting those screws out so we can get a new rope put in it and check the compression and probably have to go through the carburetor i imagine so that'll be an upcoming project and uh i'm sure y'all seen this big beast big beautiful beast this is my new 2023 can Am Renegade 1000 XXC. I'm not a big mutter. Some people like that kind of stuff. They do sell the XMR versions of these. And they come with a 
aftermarket snorkel and radiator relocate and all that jazz. But I'm not into that kind of riding. I come from the sport quad world, so this one to me is a bit odd. But ever since I was a kid, I found out about these things. Probably, uh, I think somewhere around 2009, 2010, I found out about these things. So it's been over 10 years now, and I've always wanted one of these. And, uh, you know... I've had I've got some four wheelers floating around here. They're just old, old junk and old projects and stuff. And you know, while that's been most of my whole life working on junk and whatnot, I decided to pull the trigger and get me one of these bad boys because this one came up local at my local Can Am dealer. It's pre-owned, but it's still pretty much brand new. It only had 8.9 or nine hours on it when I went and looked at it, and very low mileage some older guy bought it and rode it with his buddies and most of his buddies had side by side so he traded it back in to get a side by side and here it is um why don't i just go ahead and pull it out for you guys here how about that i'll go ahead and pull it out for you guys all righty so here he is sitting on the machine uh we're gonna do a cold start has not been started in about two days so, uh, and it's probably about 50 degrees right now. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. We're sitting at 127.5 miles right now. Yes, it has the performance key in it right now. Showing 37 degree coolant temperature. Huh, we'll see if that changes. guys we got her pulled out for you so you can get a better look at her 2023 can-am renegade 1000 xxc it's the first little walk around of this thing <clears throat> there's a lot of guys going to 2024s and stuff already but hey these things are expensive as it is so we're lucky to have a basically new one um I did put that hitch on it recently. I haven't pulled anything with it yet, but <clears throat> these things are so versatile. That was another reason I decided to go ahead and get me one of these cause this thing is ridiculously fast. It is stupid fast. It's the fastest quad I've ever ridden. And I've ridden, I come from, like I say, I come from a world of sport quads riding, you know, I've rode warrior 350s raptor 350s yfz 450s honda trx 450s i've ridden a couple 450 dirt bikes honda cr 450 uh let's see i've ridden kx 250f uh i used to own uh rm 250 two stroke 2000 model with a fmf pipe on it got that years and years ago and <clears throat> i'll tell you what none of that stuff compares to this the bikes are probably the bikes the yfz i read i rode a 2016 special edition which is fuel injected and it was an absolute beast but <clears throat> like you say none of that stuff compares to this thing as far as speed goes the uh some of those are more violent than this thing as far as power the way the power comes in but this thing right here absolutely pulls and it pulls hard you're talking 30 mile an hour wheelies with this thing easy and that's everybody talks about how they don't like cvts and don't like automatics and stuff like that sport quad guys yeah, I was one of those guys at one time, but after riding one of these things, you can't can't compare with that. But anyway, this is one of the things I've been doing. I did buy this thing recently. Bought it back in October. 
So I've had it a little over a month now and uh, just hadn't really had time to do a video. I hadn't really felt like doing a video on it. But this is one of the life update things that I've done along with the truck stuff and just been working a whole lot. Spending time with friends and family. So it's one of the reasons why we hadn't, there's about three or four reasons why we hadn't made very many videos lately in the past year or so. I know it's been quite a while anyway my 2023 can am renegade xxc one of the great things about the xxc's one of my favorite things is those fox podium shocks all the way around fully adjustable i haven't learned how to do all that yet they're set i think somebody has already adjusted on them a little bit this thing's pretty stiff right now rides a little bit on the rough side but going like on a I did go and ride like an MX track recently with this thing. And uh, <clears throat> with the suspension set up the way it is now, it was great for that. It, it really soaked up a lot of the bumps very well. Uh, yeah, this thing is amazing. I absolutely love this thing. There is one thing that they did to this thing, I think, at the dealer. While they had it, they put these flex bars on it. And <clears throat> so far, to be completely honest, I am not a fan of these flex bars. To me, they're too wide and just don't feel like I have the control over this thing like I want to have, considering it makes 91 horsepower at the drop of a hat. It is a V-Twin Rotax 1000 making 91 horsepower stock, which is absurd. I think stock, in stock form, the way that it sits now, with nothing done to it at all, I think out of the box, these things are 82 mile an hour. Fastest, one of the fastest quads on the market, if not the fastest quad on the market. Which top speed ain't everything, cause you can't use that in the woods. But just goes to show how powerful these things are. It's four wheel drive. Got your viscous lock with the selectable on-the-go four-wheel drive. I had to learn a lot about this thing because it's so fancy compared to what I'm used to. But you have your different modes. This thing has three different modes. You have work mode, standard mode, and sport mode. And it just changes the mapping and throttle sensitivity along the way, which drastically changes the way this thing rides. Uh, work mode's pretty tame. It still is very fast in work mode, but the power doesn't come in super, super quick, which is nice because, again, it's work mode and you don't want that. And then standard mode is pretty much what I ride it in most of the time because it's the most versatile mode as far as riding goes. It doesn't, it's not like a light switch quite then like it is in sport mode. Sport mode is literally like a light switch. It's pretty much the power or no power. It is, if you're not ready for it, it'll it'll get you. So yeah, three different modes with this switch. And then you got, um, <clears throat> this changes your uh, engine braking. It has three different levels of engine braking as well. So if you're working with it or whatever, if you're, going up a lot of going up down a lot of healy terrain a lot of hills or mountains or something like that if you're riding riding in like west virginia or something and you don't want to be riding the brakes a ton you can change your different levels of that you got you know minimum medium and then maximum <clears throat> which is very nice something i've never had on a quad and something i was kind of worried about buying a cvt machine but when i found out about that i was pretty well blown away at how great it was because when you put it in minimum you basically don't have any which is really nice it rolls it free rolls like a sport quad does when you pull in the clutch or you're in neutral which is very nice i like that because sometimes i don't want to be slowing down i want to i want to go and then if you come over here you have the start button obviously and all your basic controls and if you hold down your reverse um, override 
you can change the different levels of power steering. This thing has three different levels of power steering as well, which is super nice. <coughs> Never had a machine with power steering before. Always thought that was kind of overrated too. But I tell you what, it's very nice. And the cool thing about that is too, is you have a minimum, medium, and a maximum power steering. And if it's in minimum, it feels a lot like a sport quad. You really feel like you don't have that much power steering. It's stable at high speeds. Um, but as you ride throughout the day and you start getting fatigued and you feel like you, you know, especially if you're going through a lot of tight stuff, a lot of turns and stuff like that, you feel your stuff getting fatigued, you can flip that switch and or push that button and change modes and give yourself a little bit more power steering to help you out throughout the day and it's really nice too with bump steer and all that stuff you don't really have to worry about having a uh, a dampener on the steering like you do with a sport quad to minimize that bump steer which is super super nice um, yeah that's basically it guys this thing is an absolute beast and this is what I've been up to I absolutely love this thing and hope to get to ride it more soon and winter's approaching hopefully get some snow and i'll be able to try this thing out in the snow and try out the four-wheel drive because i hadn't really used it much hadn't really had a need for it but uh <clears throat> yeah i absolutely love this thing very very expensive machine but it's pretty much the do-it-all machine for me it does everything i want it goes super fast it's got four-wheel drive i can pull trailers and you know like i got like i say old Polaris sitting in the yard and I got a Yamaha around back that neither one of them run currently and they need some work and I can snatch them around the yard when I need to or pull the trailer around the yard if the yard's real muddy and I need to get my get to my trailer there I can get to it with this machine and not have to worry about driving the truck through the yard and making deep ruts or something like that that's just this thing's super Super, super versatile, and I absolutely love it. A lot of people go with Outlanders and stuff like that, and Outlander's another great machine. Um, <clears throat> I just didn't really need the racks, uh, and I've always wanted a Renegade. I like the this, this sleek, aggressive stance and look that these things have. And it's just always caught my eye since ever since I was a kid, and I had to have one. So it's a bucket list item, crossed off. And yeah. So, like I say, I'm not a big fan of the flex bars. We'll probably be changing them in the near future. Probably go with some uh, uh, fatty bars or something like that. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to go with yet, but I know that I'm probably going to be changing those to something a little bit narrower. It feels like I've got a little bit more control over the machine. And I find that being that wide all day creates a little more fatigue, in my opinion, compared to narrower bars just personal preference i'm a big guy i'm over six foot tall and i still like the narrower bars <clears throat> and we're probably going to be changing that stock exhaust to something with a little bit more aggressive note and another thing with anything that has factory exhaust is creates a lot of heat especially up in this area it creates a lot of heat and these plastics are quite rigid stock it's cold right now these plastics are pretty rigid but when that thing gets real hot those plastics start getting floppy and it breaks stuff on them and, you know you got this expensive machine you don't want to be breaking plastics and stuff so definitely gonna be changing the exhaust for a better note and uh probably i don't know about maybe a little bit more performance i think it does give you a little bit when you change it but that's not the main reason we just want to get rid of some heat and get a little bit better note out of it. We're probably going to go with the... I was thinking the RWJC, but... Because they sound really, really nice and look really, really, really nice on these machines. But they're not covered under warranty. And we want something covered under warranty. So, the factory uh, performance upgrade for these is the Yoshimura. Which also sounds really nice and is really nice exhaust. But it's just single. It's a single out like the factory. And the, RW, the RJWC is a dual exhaust system which obviously looks better, but it's not covered under warranty. And this thing does have an extended warranty and don't want to mess with that. So I'd like to get something that doesn't mess with my warranty. And uh, it's probably what we're going to end up going with. And that's 
So bars and exhaust are probably going to be the two major upgrades that we do to this thing. Otherwise, probably going to leave it alone because it don't need nothing. This thing is super fast and performs and does exactly how I want it to do the way that it is. And honestly, if it had the factory bars on it instead of those flex bars, we probably wouldn't even mess with it. But uh, since it's got the flex bars on it and I'm not a big fan, we'll probably be snatching them off, selling them, and putting on something different. I know a lot of people like them, but I'm just not a fan. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, we'll finish this little clip off with a, another startup and another just to walk around on this thing running probably not going to ride it though the yard's a little muddy and trying to keep minimize damage on the yard so let's we'll do a little bit of start do a start up and walk around on it. it's still cold right now i did just pull it out of the building and then i cut it right off so not going to be doing any revving up we're just going to let it let it do its thing here That's it guys for the the renegade so yeah the truck update four wheeler new four wheeler i don't really, no, wouldn't really call it an update but new four wheeler video and stuff like that uh say the building's a total mess right now because i had to make room for that four wheeler when i bought it i got to get in here when it starts warming up and clean this baby out so we can see what we got get rid of some stuff, make some room for new projects and new stuff. But uh, yeah, building's a total mess. Total, total mess. But still got a lot of my saws. Probably gonna be liquidating some. Thinking about selling the 460 here, but uh, not quite sure yet. Probably maybe thinking about selling the 064 because I have another one of them in the works of it's on the back burner of being built one of these days. Whenever we get time, it's going to be a rest of restoration, but that saw right there runs really good. Not the prettiest saw in the world to look at, but runs really, really good. Got my 066 flat top. Another reason why we may, don't really need the 64 there. Uh, might be selling that 77 L right there. Runs really, really good. Got all my go-tos, pretty much. You can tell what I use and what I don't really use. Everything hanging up is the most of the stuff that I use when I go cut. I've got a mint low hour 440, my 044, y'all seen in videos. A 372, that's the 385 XP, y'all seen another 372. My mint low hour 394, 242. My John's Red 2171 it was a fire and rescue saw, but since converted it to a to a actual wood saw. Uh, <clears throat> got my Red Max G5300. We got to do something with one of these days runs, but want to do some mods to it. Got the Red Max G561. Y'all have seen in a video previous. <clears throat> that saw there hadn't been used a ton either, but. Last time I got it out, it was leaking fuel pretty bad. So I'm assuming the fuel line shrunk and it's probably time. It's never had one before. 
Got my super low hour mint MS200 rear handle I've always wanted. Super, super low hour saw, beautiful saw. Got to do some mods to it one of these days because it's totally stock. We're gonna have to like to open the muffler up and give her a little bit more timing. Got the super spicy 346 XP. Got another stock 346 XP. And the 242 I just showed y'all. And then down here we got a, a Husqvarna 238 SE that needs some work. Bought it off eBay a while back. It did run, but it's got a little bit of little bit of scoring on the piston. So we're gonna have to eventually snatch it apart and take a look at it and see what we can do with it. Because parts are super scarce for those. Got my two four one of my two forty sixes. Well, the only one I have anymore because I sold the other one. Two of the Kawasaki weed eaters we got. Old Honda engine need to get rid of. Somewhere in there is a Briggs and Stratton flathead eight horsepower I need to get rid of. Uh, we got a Kawasaki LT250R motor in there. We got to put on a quad one of these days. That's going to be a future project, but we've got to get a frame and all the other pieces for it. That's a motor supposedly got a new piston rings in it. But I'd love to have that quad one of these days. Uh, got my chain grinder. I don't ever get to use because I don't have the room. One of these days we're going to have a shop, guys. My Poland 2150 I got running. Modded the muffler on. Another 242 hiding in there. And my 462, y'all all know about. <clears throat> Probably going to be selling that thing pretty soon. And upgrading to a brand new one. Absolutely nothing wrong with this thing. Um, just thinking about getting a new one. Just because. I've had several people want Several of my saw buddies want it and thought about letting one of them have it and just upgrade to me a new one. Because uh, I might get might get one with heated handles or something. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. But anyway, that's it for the update video, guys. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Nothing special. Showed y'all the updates on the truck. My new four-wheeler. Been spending time with family and <clears throat> friends and working a lot that's pretty much it um hope to get on some new videos soon uh y'all stay on me about it i'm gonna do my very best to try to start putting out some content for you uh yeah hopefully have some maybe some riding videos and some saw videos thought about doing maybe some hunting maybe eventually some fishing because it's been getting into that kind of stuff um lots of different stuff guys that's why i decided to change the channel name to drew's creations because it's pretty much my life and what the things i like to do so if y'all enjoyed it give me a thumbs up i appreciate y'all watching thanks true blues if you're watching to the end here and it was good talking to y'all i look forward to reading y'all's comments i do read it try to read all the comments i can so if i don't get to yours it's because probably didn't see it so i apologize in advance youtube don't always give me the notifications for all the comments but i do try to read through them and respond to the ones that i can respond to and appreciate everybody watching we'll catch you on the next one over and out stay kind oh and happy thanksgiving hope you all had a good thanksgiving and if i don't see you again till christmas or after christmas hope you all have a merry christmas over and out thanks for watching